The extradition process and how it works from start to finish. Teach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! Most Jamaicans remember the speed with which Tivoli Gardens convicted fugitive Christopher Doddoscoke was whisked away by US Marshals in 2010 after he was captured and handed over to US authorities to answer drugs and gun running charges. But the extradition process can be lengthy given the intricacies of each case. The process is a multifaceted procedure that incorporates multiple arms of government at various levels. The requesting states, which can either be members of the Commonwealth or the United States, would send through their embassies or high commissions a diplomatic note to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. With this note, the requesting state would send authenticated documents containing the evidence against the person for whom they want the extradition. The Foreign Affairs Ministry then sends the documents to the Ministry of Justice, which is the central authority for extradition matters, where the minister will sign the relevant documents. The Justice Ministry then passes the documents on to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, which acts as the lawyers for the requesting state. Having received the information, it is perused by prosecutors who verify the existence of double criminality meaning that the offence for which the person is wanted in the requesting state corresponds with an offence under the Jamaican law. Whatever offence they are wanted for, Jamaica must have a corresponding offence or the extradition order cannot proceed. So when the papers come, they are looked at and studied to find that there is an offence. After the double criminality is established, two documents are then drafted. The first document is the authority to proceed for the offences which were found to be extraditable offences. The double criminality is made out and a draft of that is sent to the Minister of Justice, advising that he can sign it, but he does not have to if he does not want to do so. The authority to proceed gives jurisdiction for all other actions that follow in the process. Without the authority to proceed, no action can be taken. The second document prepared is a warrant of arrest. Once it is signed by the minister, the warrant of arrest is taken to a parish judge, formerly called a resident magistrate in chambers, who examines the authority to proceed and the other documents. If comfortable with the documents, the judge then signs the warrant. Until this point, all processes would have remained a secret to preserve the element of surprise. Once the warrant is signed, it is given to a member of the Fugitive Apprehension Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and they go out in search of the person. When the warrant is executed and the person is arrested under the Extradition Act, in the great majority of extradition cases, and some persons don't understand, that the persons have no local charges against them. So really, they are arrested on the extradition warrant and the process of extraditing to another country is going to begin. The individual is then brought before the court as soon as possible, usually between two to three days after the arrest. In court, the accused has two options, including waiving the right to an extradition trial or to challenge the extradition. If the first option is selected, the subject is sent to the requesting country after the warrant of committal is signed. If the subject opts for the second option, his lawyer is served with copies of the documents sent from the requesting state in court and a date for a hearing will be set. On the hearing date, the evidence which is called formal evidence, usually someone from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is called to acknowledge that the request is made and a police officer is called to execute the warrant. Any other submissions in law that are going to be made are made on the documents that have been submitted which contains all the evidence. The parish judge upon hearing the evidence can commit a person for extradition or discharge a person if not convinced that the evidence makes out what is called a prima facie case, which is the presentation of sufficient evidence to support the legal claim. An extradition hearing is not a trial, so there is no acquittal. All the magistrate is there to do is to check whether the evidence is sufficient to charge. 
based on the evidence, a person looking on it could say, I could possibly find this person guilty. So, it is a very low standard in that sense. It is not proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It is a prima facie case. So, as long as the evidence is enough to commit that person for a trial, that is how it goes. The subject then has 15 days to determine whether or not he will challenge the parish judge's decision. If nothing happens after the 15 days, then the process of sending to the Minister of Justice for him to sign a surrender warrant begins. But if within those days the subject files a case in the Supreme Court, the process is automatically halted. In the Supreme Court, which is a full court, a panel of three judges has to be arranged to hear the matter. The three Supreme Court judges have broader powers than the parish judge because the parish judge is really only limited to see if there is a prima facie case made out. The Supreme Court judges now can look at everything surrounding the request. At this level, the court constitutes the same parties from the lower court, the applicant and the prosecutor from the DPP's office, in addition to the Attorney General's chambers, which represents the Commissioner of Corrections, who would now have responsibility for the subject awaiting extradition. Again, two things can happen. The Supreme Court judges can find that the applicant has made his case and they discharge him. And that is the end of that. Or they can find that he must be extradited. If they commit him to extradition, he only has one more avenue left. That is to go to the Court of Appeal. The subject again has 15 days to apply to the Court of Appeal, where he can either be discharged or committed for extradition. When they order him to be extradited, that is the end of it. There is no appeal to the Privy Council. The decision of the Court of Appeals is the final in extradition matters. The only way you can get to go to the Privy Council is if you add a constitutional argument. If you don't do it, the matter is dead once the Court of Appeal finishes with it and orders that you must be extradited. After all channels are exhausted, the Director of Public Prosecution's office drafts the surrender warrant for the minister's signature. The surrender warrant is the document that gives the authority for a Jamaican to be taken out of the country. If signed, a copy is provided to the office of the DPP, the Commissioner of Corrections, as well as the requesting state. So the minister can consider everything, can read the varying judgments of all the courts, and he has the power to decide whether or not the person is to go. If he says the person is to go, that is it. January of 2010, then Minister of Justice Dorothy Lightburn refused the extradition request of Presley Bingham, a Jamaican whom the United States wanted for a jug running. Bingham was first apprehended in 2005, then released in 2007 by the Court of Appeal, after a writ of habeas corpus was filed on his behalf by his attorneys because he had not been extradited within the time prescribed by law. He was rearrested in 2009 on a renewed extradition request from the United States. But Lightburn at the time cited that the US breached an instruction given in 2007 by the Court of Appeals, which said that Bingham should not have been rearrested on the same offense, and like that America's petition was denied. An extradition can also be refused if there is a view that the person is being punished for his race political opinions or religious belief. So, if it is determined that the reason for extradition is really to prosecute for political opinions, race or beliefs, the extradition request can be denied. An extradition request can also be made in emergency situations. In this case, it is called a provisional request. So, for example, say that the requesting state is pursuing someone. They are trying to track him down and at the last moment, the person managed to jump on a plane, and that is when they discover that the plane is in the air on its way to Jamaica. What they do is ask for a provisional request. A diplomatic note is sent asking for the provisional request. With the provisional request, a warrant is drafted, taken to a judge in chambers, saying this person is on their way to Jamaica, or this person has just landed, and the requesting state has not had enough time to make its formal request. The judge will sign the warrant if he or she feels everything is in order. 
that person is brought before the court as soon as possible after the warrant is executed. And Jamaica requires 60 days, two months at least, for the foreign state to then send down the evidence. If 60 days pass and the foreign state does not send it out, the person is released. This of course is not a bar for the warrant to be executed at a later time and the person rearrested. A Jamaican man was arrested in October of 2016 and extradited to the US for the killing of a Miami Beach woman more than two decades before. It was reported that the man, Dale Ewers, age 53 at the time he was extradited, faced charges of murder, sexual battery, armed robbery and kidnapping. Police said that Ewers shot the 34-year-old woman to death inside her South Beach apartment in 1990 and raped her friend. I am mentioning this case to point out as the Extradition Act has provisions allowing for the passage of time. So the Minister of Justice or even a court, the Supreme Court, can look on the request and say too much time has passed to give effect to the request. Noting that the person alleging passage of time would have to show how the time passed with prejudice is or her defense in the requesting state. Teach them! Hey yo, hello! Send the message and make it reach them. It's teach them right here, Warlord representing. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment below. Remember to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. Follow me on social media and check out the suggested videos on screen. This is Teach saying, until next time, walk good, my friends.